Hello, my name is Jason Camp. I'm a TFS enthusiast with a passion for process enforcement. This short video will be discussing the TFS plugin suite now available on CodePlex. So, what is the TFS plugin suite? Well, it's a collection of TFS plugins that enforces process guidance on the server side, across all teams, and is easily customizable to meet the needs of different organizations and their processes. You may be thinking, why should we use the TFS plugin and not just regular old client-side check-in policy like we've been using for years now? Here are the top three reasons I am now pri that I am now pr primarily using the TFS plugins over check-in policies. First, we need to ensure compliance. TFS plugins can ensure the enforcement of policies is not overridden. Check-in policies can be overridden by the user and only a notification of non-compliance is sent along. I think of TFS plugins more like guardrails and check-in policies more like rumble strips. Don't get me wrong, rumble strips are better than not having anything, but they may not stop you from driving off a cliff. A second advantage to TFS plugins over check-in policies is ease of configuration. Where I work, we manage over, over 50 team projects and require that all teams abide by the same application lifecycle management process. We have written our fair share of console applications to deploy and configure many aspects of TFS to ensure that all team projects configurations are kept in sync. Having a single touch point to modify the configuration for all team projects that we manage may not be appealing to everyone, but it helps us a great deal. If you manage many team projects and want to enforce process compliance across the board, it's a snap to change a .NET config file and start building up those guardrails. The final point I will make on making, on making the case for TFS plugins over check-in policies is that TFS plugins are easy to deploy as the bits live in one place, the TFS server. All you do is copy the DLL and config to the TFS plugins directory on the TFS server and you're done. No more messing with client deployments of check-in policies. Want to make an iterative improvements to your process enforcement without the high cost of deployment and coordination of client-side check-in policies? Think of using a TFS plugin. Now that I've made a case for TFS plugins over check-in policies, let's dig into some of the policies currently available within the TFS plugin suite. The forbidden patterns policy prevents users from checking in files with forbidden file name patterns. For example, you can stop your users from checking in compilation output, the DLLs, XEs, and the like. Are you certain you aren't building your app with some checked in DLL that was compiled from one of your developer's laptops? Let's not just hope that you have all your source code, let's make sure and enforce it. Let's do a quick demo of the policy. I'll open up the configuration file to see what we are checking. As you can see, we have five forbidden pattern configured. If you're familiar with the TFS Power Tools, you'll notice that this is basically the same functionality that it provides for the client side. Since I want to enforce this so that people are actually forbidden from checking in these types of files, I'm going to use the TFS plugin model instead. You can also give a friendly error message back to the user for each forbidden pattern. It's a little nicer than telling the user uh, the regular expression uh, that the check-in violated. A little easier to see the actual friendly message than the regular expression itself that comes back. Okay, we'll just leave the config file as is and test it out. Now let's try to check in a DLL. I've added one to application one. Let's add it to source control and check it in. We'll notice compilation output does not belong to source control, which is the same message that is shown in the friendly error message here. You'll see that there's nothing that I can do to override this policy, and that's what I want. We, we own our own NuGet server and we'll, that will provide access to our approved shared DLLs, including the vendor DLLs, so we don't need to put these in source control anyhow. As another quick example, if you want to standardize on C Sharp as opposed to VB.NET, you could just pick, you could just put a quick regular expression to do this and give a friendly error message back to the user to guide them through the tailored standards. 
So if we try to add a file with VB in this particular case, Visual Basic is not a language that we support. You could just put in a quick regular expression to do this and give friendly error messages back to the user to guide them through your tailored standards. So if we try to check in a file with the VB extension, we will be stopped at the door. Now onto my favorite TFS plugin to date, the work item association policy. This policy ensures that the associated work items to a check-in comply with standards that you set. Since check-ins are the most finely grained gateway to ensuring the process is followed, it is important that we invest in guiding the user through the process at this touch point. Within this policy, you have some options. You can specify denied work item queries. If the results from those denied work item queries matches any of your associated work items to the check-in, then the check-in is stopped. If you want to stop people from directly assigning check-ins with a requirement, you can do this here. If you take a look at the sec second example shown on this slide, we can also deny check-ins if an associated task doesn't have a parent work item in the requirements category group. This really ensures that the TFS task boards are showing the work that's actually being performed. Do realize that the configuration shown here is just examples and you're free to change them as you see fit. I'm sure you're familiar with the at me, at today, and at project macros that you're able to use within work item queries right now. All I have done here is created an at associated work items macro that substitutes the work item IDs to limit the result set. Please use this macro in the queries contained in the codeplex.tfsplugin.suite.config. A second option that you have with a work item association policy is the ability to specify work item queries that are required to match to the associated work items. This is similar to the work items query policy that is found in the TFS power tools, but again it is configured at the server level, not at the team project level. In the example shown here, we are requiring that the user associate the check-in with a single active task that is assigned to the submitter. You may be saying, okay, I understand that you want the person to own the task and that, uh, that they are working, but why does it have to be just a single task? Well, I wholeheartedly agree with Stephen Burkutch in his book on software configuration management patterns where he states, do one commit per small grain consistent task. Strive to have each commit of code reflect one task. When in doubt, err on the side of more check-ins because it is easier to roll back changes and see the effects of integration with other people's work. Enforcing the check-ins be associated with a single task encourages contributors to com complete discrete pieces of work and commit them into source control as single atomic transaction. This allows for better traceability between work item tracking and source control, the ability to leverage change set rollbacks, and cherry pick merging. You will see that I'm borrowing the terminology from the Kanban process here. The WIP, or work in progress limit, is not a soft limit like it is on the Kanban board in TFS Web Access. Rather, it is a hard limit on how many work items are allowed to be in a to be associated per check-in. This allows for a race to done situation where a user, user focuses on completing the task. We all need a little prodding in this area because we would rather work on what we want to work on first. Finally, you can check the iteration dates associated with the work items that match your, your required work item query. Iteration dates are new with TFS 2012 and it's time to leverage them. You can see an example of some of the types of errors you will receive if you enable checking the iteration dates in the config file. The error on the left is when dates aren't set on the iteration, and the error on the right is when you're trying to use an old task to do current work. I've seen this happen a lot, and it's not a nice thing to do in the system. I hope this video helped in understanding the purpose of the TFS plugin suite. We will be adding additional plugins to the suite in the near future and would welcome your feedback on the Codeplex, Disco the Codeplex discussion board.